Okay, welcome back, guys. Oh, uh, JCath. <laughs> Don't hate me, it's JCath, your favorite mod. I just want some good luck in you. So, good luck in your new place. Oh, well, thank you, man. Thanks a lot, Jared. Alright, let's get this stuff started. Oh, welcome, this is the patch 7.7 .7 patch note rundown. Uh, I'm actually kind of interested in this one because I have no expectations in this patch notes. Uh, the reason being is, uh, well, I have expectations in that it's supposed to be big, but I don't know exactly what they're going to do. So, the na last patch note 7.6 was Riot's patch notes when they originally stated that they wanted to keep it kind of small and tight for playoffs. And so 7.7 is their first patch after playoffs that should be kind of large, kind of maybe a little bit sweeping. Uh, it's close to the midseason, so... Uh, this is the setup for the midseason patch. Anyways, um, let's see what they do. <laughs> so welcome to 7.7 7 patch notes where we've changed it to a lot of different things. Forgotten supports, weak junglers for starters. Also the header art's a little different. Alright, that's irrelevant. In terms of highlights, me trying to collect, collecting more. Rewarding for bar. Okay, uh, let me just read it through. So one of the big champions is Amumu. So Amumu is a kind of interesting champion. Um, actually, when I was talking, or when I saw Acadian's last vlog, he kind of talked a little bit about the state of the jungle right now. And it's actually pretty hard to play the jungle because most of the times, especially in earlier seasons, you, should, you used to be able to clear the jungle, full clear the jungle, and be full health after you're clear. But um, this season, essentially, unless you're Graves or one other champion, uh, the jungle beats the crap out of you. Like, actually just, like, pushes your your stuff in. And so, um, a lot of the other junglers can't really handle that very well. Uh, so either their clear speed gets gets impacted, or they're not very healthy when they clear, or they, they give all that... To be healthy, they give up the ability to skirmish. And I think to be an effective, strong jungler right now, you need to be able to skirmish, clear, and gank, and some combination of the three. So, what did they think? Amumu is relatively, like, l not good, to be honest. Like, he's not great at skirmishing. His clear is not bad, uh, but he's a little bit unhealthy and he's bad at skirmishing, essentially, unless he hits the Q. So, similar to Vibe. Um, so, what did they do for him? Amumu passive causes magic damage against the target to deal bone extra tree damage rather than re reducing magic resist. W deals more damage and takes faster. Um, he didn't really have a reliable way to use his passive while he had some degree of amping up his friend's magic damage. He couldn't maintain it very often. When Amumu to enable others, we're giving Amumu the ability to do what he's best at. Uh, crying and hugging people. Amumu's basic autos reduce, cause 15% of all magic damage dealt to be dealt again as true damage. Well, one, that's super strong. Um, two, that's not as strong as you may think uh, in relative to his old passive. So... 15, his old passive is actually really good. Um, a lot better than people may realize. Like, being able to auto and de reduce 15 MR, especially early, is the equivalent of getting essentially almost Sork Shoes. Uh, so it might be actually better value to keep the old passive, even though the new passive sounds like it'd be a lot better. Um, but I'm interested in the other stuff. So what do they do? They increase the damage by uh, the tick rate. So once per half second, half damage per tick. So okay, it takes every half second, and which would impact stuff like Leandries, for instance, um, and also just constantly updating stuff and keeping people slow. This is also really good for Rallies, for instance. Uh, Despair refreshes Curse's touch on all enemies. Oh, that's super good. So if you auto someone and you you're next to them with W, they'll never drop, which is really good. And ulti applies curse touch to enemies after the damage is done. After? That's pretty weird. I'm surprised it doesn't... Um... Oh, wait. No, no, that's, not, that's fine. Because then the damage portion comes out like a half second after the initial cast. And that's what it means, after the damage is dealt. Uh, this, is more, this is more important than anything else. Because... Even if they used the old passive and they made it so that he his ulti applied his old passive to everyone that he ultied, it would be super good. And being able to do this and apply your passive, even if it was the old passive, is extremely powerful. It ups his team fighting and skirmishing by a lot. Because now it, it's it's just a lot of his damage or uh, I would say impact comes from his passive. Stuff that you may not notice. Like the most optimal stuff with the Mumu is like. Um, 
you Q onto someone, you auto them into while W is on into an ulti into E. Um, but you can't really get that reliably, especially in mid to late game situations. That's all really only like a 1v1 thing. So being able to have your kit actually work kind of mid to late game is incredible, as well as the fact that Despair refreshes. So I think that this is really cool. I don't even know if they need to change the passive, but um, I think it, it makes all AP team comps actually better. So I know that a lot of people think that um, there are situations where all AD team comps aren't bad and all AP team comps aren't bad. But for the most part, if you specialize your damage, like all your team does one sort of damage, it's really easy for the enemy team to itemize. Uh, however, I think this is this passive is one way around that option. So if you run like a really AD, AP heavy comp, let's say you have AP double AP soul laners and then the Mumu, um, even with going into late game, you can still do a decent amount of damage. Like 15% uh, true damage scaling works, like scales really well into late game. So overall, I really like how they were able to work his passive, which becomes less reliable into the mid late into the rest of his, his kit. So this is really good. I like everything I see here. Um, I think he'll be a lot better, um, especially mid to late. I think early game, he'll still have problems, but um, I'm hoping maybe the spare buff helps him out a little bit. I don't think he'll be god tier jungler, but he as he has more of a defined niche, which is exactly what you want from weaker junglers. You buff them until you they fi you find a niche to where they work, or just weaker champions in general. So moving on, Alistar, he's a really weak champion right now. So what does he do? Uh, passive heals nearby enemy allies, E cooldown reduced, and power auto deals more damage. So. So it says passive now hits all of his allies. I don't know if that means all champions. I think it means all units as well, um, which is good for a mid late game. Let let them heal a lot more, especially in siege situations. Uh, and his trample. Wow, his E cooldown got buffed a lot. Four seconds off on level one. Four seconds off on level five, and the damage goes up to up to eighty damage. 90 damage at level 18. That's a lot. Wow, I'm actually surprised. That's a lot of... That's a pretty big damage buff. Um, I think, especially right now, Alistair's not really built for his damage. He's there to apply CC. So even... But even early game, having a, tw a 4 seconds off one of his CC abilities just means that, like, you could you can try to go in more, especially if, you're, uh, if your abilities are off cooldown a lot sooner. I think that this is nice, uh, healthy buff to the champion. Doesn't make him super OP. Um, right now, Alistair's just fighting, it's really hard to pick this champion because all the ranged supports like just beat the crap out of him. And even the melee supports tend to out-impact him a lot. So stuff like Kench, stuff like Braum. Um, it's hard for Alistair to really find his place. I don't want him to become the best support in the game again. But I, and I, so I think these, buff, these buffs are small, but still helpful. I don't think it'll be a solo lane either, so... Uh, now, he'll still be support, but he just will be a little bit better, which is what he needed. Bard. I don't think Bard's that bad right now. I'm surprised they're giving him buffs. Bard gains bonus move damage at every time tier. Damage tier is only removed. Um, other tiers restructured. Bard can now hold a max 9 meeps. What the heck? I don't think I've ever had more than 4. Um, although Bard's some improvement after last buff, he's far from enough to land him in a good spot. Bard's pretty underwhelming compared to other sports. Really? As part of the it comes with how taxi and chime collection can be. Really? Is is that what makes Bard bad? Because of his chime collection tax? I I think it's like his laning. Like his chime collection is fine right now. As a person who's been playing a lot of Bard recently, played a lot of Bard before, I I don't mind the mini game of having to collect chimes it's not that big a deal um but anyways let's continue we'll be clear we're not looking for massive power shifts while meeps should matter enough for bards to leave lane uh for charms they shouldn't compel him to abandon his lane altogether we can ensure bards early charms provide them with enough bonus to exert pressure in lane once he returns from wandering um okay so meep now gains 15 damage every five charms he does in addition to other chime bonuses chime tier bonuses restructured all damage has been removed bard can now hold the maximum yeah exactly what he said uh, tiers from 150 times to 105, no longer grant. Oh, so I think what it does is just it just increases the amount of damage he gets early. So five is a better slow. Oh, he gets one extra meep so early. What was the what, what was when he got 
one extra meep. It's 15. And then the next one is at 55. He gets third. He gets his third meep at 30. Hmm. His damage cone size gets increased. So overall, they smoothed out his uh, the Bard Chime Collections passive and made it so that he it, it's more impactful early. Um, that's cool. I guess that's a good way to slightly buff the champion without going crazy overboard in terms of any of his raw numbers outside of his passive. It rewards you for being able to route correctly when you roam around chimes. I have no problem with this. Um, I think the faster you get extra meeps, the more valuable attack speed reds become on Bard. So right now I'm using Hybrid Pen, but a lot of Bards in the past have swapped be between the two. Uh, because if you do get attack speed reds, it means that you want to just be able to unload both your meeps and harass at once and get away. And so being able to run Hybrid Pen means you get it off a lot, like a decent amount slower. And so I'm probably going to switch to full attack speed on reds after this situation just because... I think it's better to be able to get rid, rid of the stuff, especially with early meep spawns. Meep spawns up to 9. So yeah, I think attack speed reds are definitely better after this buff, if not already better right now. So moving on, Camille. Ugh. This champ is so insane. I think they just overloaded Camille's kit. They gave her everything. I don't really think she's a really unique champion, actually. I just think she's a overloaded champion. When I see her, I don't think, wow, what a cool champion. I just think... Oh, I do. I just, but I think it's sarcastically. I'm just like, wow, what a cool champ because she initiated from like a thousand two hundred range. If she's ahead, uh, she ulti someone, and if you have a shield, unless you have a shield or exhaust, you're probably gonna die because you can't flash out. Um, and I'm fine with her ulti. I actually am, but the fact that she has like a shield and attack speed steroid, uh, an AOE slow healing, um, uh, auto reset, and percentage damage with her ulti, it's like. They gave her everything. So rather than her being like a very defined niche of being like a backline diver that got closes a lot, they gave her like the full works along with the niche. And so I don't really like the champions that aren't well defined uh, in terms of like either theme or like what she does. And I think Camille's a real bad ex or a good example of that type of champion. So what did they decide to do? W no longer kills off non-champions. Okay, so I thought her W heal was insane because she's not only she can start Doran's blade. And W to heal for over 100 at level 1 if it hits the champion. I think that's kind of crazy um, that she has that level of sustain so early into the game. Uh, like Usually for Bruisers, you expect them to have to be forced to go Corrupting Potion rather than Doran's, but she's not. And so I always thought that was kind of uh, really strong of her, especially laning-wise. So W no longer kill off non-champs is a big laning nerf. And R duration reduced at lower ranks or uh, earlier ranks. Okay, so Hextech Ultimatum. Um, so this probably makes it so that she's less frustrated to play against early. Uh, overall, pretty good buffs. Or, or, sorry, nerfs to the champion. I still think this champ's pretty strong. And if you look at her competitive pick rate, she still picked a ton. Uh, even if she doesn't have like an exceptionally good lady phase, she still picked uh, quite a bit. And so I think these are good steps in the right direction. I still think her kit's like stupidly overloaded, but... Um, I don't, it doesn't look like they're willing to be able to remove too much about it. And I guess that just means that the champion will just have to be nerfed, uh, from like small parts of her, the champion. Um, okay. Any, any nerfs can be all good in my book. Continuing on, Galio. Okay, so if you know anything about me, I've played a ton of Galio in the, in the last week. Like, uh, last week and a half, like, uh, two weeks. Uh, a ton of Galio. Let, let's go look at both my accounts, okay? So I have 30 games of Galio played on my main account. And before this, I had played less than five before the rework. So 30 games on one account. And on my other account, I've played 14 games. So I've played about 40, over 40 games in the last two weeks of Galio. So I'm pretty, I, I understand the champion pretty well after the re rework. The number one thing that stands out to me is his Q does too much damage. Um, I don't really understand why it does that much damage. It does <laughs> initial damage on the hit, initial the initial initial damage on the the collapse, I, and it does percentage health shred every time they stand in it. And so that's the number one thing I would nerf. The other one, the other thing that I think about this champion that's actually pretty annoying is I would wish that when they re they removed a lot of damage from Q and made it so that his Q did something else. I don't think his Q should just be a damage ability. Uh, if, if the champion itself feels like you're just like a rock, like you walk up to people, you like, you sure you have a lot of CC in your kit, right? Like you have good CC with, 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 um, 
W E and you're good at anti diving off your ulti or or assisting divers off your ulti. But it just I, I think because they the rest of his kid has so much CC, they didn't know what to do with his W, so they just made it do damage. I think that that it feels really bad. Like it, it just I, I don't think his Q should just do damage. Sorry, I think I might have said W. I I, I don't know. Um, so what did they do? They nerfed his passive damage. Um, by a little bit, and they nerfed his. Oh, they buffed his initial wind blast AP ratio, which seems kind of crazy, and they nerfed the tornado damage by six. So that's pretty good nerfs. That's exactly what I wanted in terms of like a nerf to Q damage, um, and a slight nerf to passive. So overall, his damage all in does is better. Uh, he scales better with Abyssal now because he go armor MR or AP MR. I don't think he'd go AP on this champ at all ever, but. So this random this buff doesn't really do much for you, but everything else is good. Um, so it, it, sorry, it got nerfed by three percent. Um, good nerf. I, I don't know what's too much. I think taking a third of the um, damage over time on his Q is a good start. I like it. Good. Thumbs up to this. So Graves. Um, Graves is a pretty problematic champion because you remember I, I told you a lot of champions. Um, in this current jungle, just get beat up by the jungle because the jungle camps like a certain dominance over you in your early clears up until you get like for your your full jungle item. Like you just get chunked any jungle you're playing. The exception is Graves, and and because he has this small pushback on jungle camps, he could just infinitely farm the jungle and never have to worry about health. Like he worries more about his mana than he worries about his health, and so it's really hard to. I don't think Graves is an exceptionally good one v one champ. Like I think if the other jungle champ. Yeah, Gets to jump on Graves, Graves will always be like Graves will die. Like Graves won't win that. With the and, but the problem is is like when Graves is looking for you in, in your jungle, he will be at full health and you'll get chunked. And when he whenever if he's farming the jungle, you look to invade Graves, he's still gonna be full health. And so being able to nerf part of his sustain is is probably something that's that's good. So what did they do? They made it so cowboys hate magic. His E does do give him a lot of defensive stats. That's also another big problem. So what did they do? They nerfed... He, he lost up to 120 MR max stacks, so he's more vulnerable to AP damage. Uh, actually, pretty decent nerf. I, I like it. It means that even if he's healthy, he can get chunked down by um, the respective mid laner, for instance. And I think that uh, now if you're playing against uh, an AP champion that goes off. It's really hard for Graves to play the game. He has to rush Maw, which is something that should have happened before, but you're able to cheat it because you have quick draw. Um, it still doesn't really solve the problem that he gets, like, in... He has... He doesn't get health loss in the jungle, but it makes it so that he's easier to skirmish and deal with kind of mid into, mid 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 and late game. I think that that's good. Uh, good buff, but... They maybe could have done a little bit more, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, any nerfs to Graves are good nerfs in my opinion. Jarvan. Okay, this champ sucks. So, um, everything that... The reason why Jarvan sucks, and really the best way to explain why Jarvan's not a good champion, is Jarvan is like the poor man's Camille. Um, Camille is a champion that is like... Just way better than Jarvan. They can't flash, get out of her ulti. It's the same as Jarvan's, essentially. Um... She has a better gap closer, it's longer range, you can't, it's a lot harder for you to miss it and a lot harder for them to dodge it and you can flash it and it does damage on the flash, plus the hard seizes them at the end. So uh, the only thing that could, and the fact that she also has a shield, which is more reliable because Jarvan has to hit multiple targets where she could just hit one. And so in all aspects, like I think Jarvan's just a terrible version of Camille, um, pretty much. And so he needs some buffs in some way shape or form the last i remember when jarvan rumble used to be the best jarvan used to be the best jungler in the game because jarvan rumble used to be one of the best comps in the game and they they nerfed him by removing 10 armor off of his e um and then he became essentially not played slash low tier for the rest of his ex existence so i'm curious to see what they do to buff him back because yeah camille really just makes me just shows me that jarvan's like a pretty outdated champion So what do they like to do? I've seen actually some decent W Max Jarvan top lanes. Um, 
from Nid Nidhogg especially runs this and he says that it's not bad. However, it seems to be overpowered by better tankier top laners. So like Gragas, so like Nalus, or just seem to outclass that 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 thing that Jarvan brings. Um, so what do they do now? They he has a higher uh, W at lower ranks, and now it scales off of his percentage maximum health. So they're kind of just pushing him toward he has to be like a, a health stacking frontline tank rather than being a full assassin that maybe someone like Ray, for instance, would like to, to do. Uh, I don't actually mind this. It just means that you nerf... It's, it's essentially like a big nerf to uh, non-tank oriented Jarvan builds. Um, I think that He's still not going to see any play. I don't think he, he definitely sucks in the jungle. And top lane, I don't think he's very good against much. Um, he might be okay as a top lane grasp tank into other top laners. But aside from that, I don't think he brings that much value. I'd like to try him out a little bit top lane though afterwards. For the most part, this is probably the least impressive buff I've seen of all of this. Uh, it's... At best, just like a strict trade-off with a slight buff at level 1. Uh, and at worst, it just like a flat neutral. Or it, it denies the entire... Like, it makes his other, like, somewhat viable full AD build path much worse. It, eh. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of underwhelmed, <laughs> to be honest. Alright, let's keep going. Jinx. E cooldown reduced at later levels. Oh, I thought they made it so his, her W could crit. You know what would be a good Jarvan ulti? If you couldn't walk out of his ult. Like if Jarvan ulti had like Camille ulti where you couldn't flash out of it. Or like you could only, f let's say you could only flash out of it. It'd be a lot better. I think the only buff Jarvan needs is you can't flash out of his ulti damage actually. That's so obnoxious. If you're playing this champion... And you get your ulti damage flash, you're just like, alright man, I guess that's it. Because his ulti now does AoE damage, but you can also flash it. Because it's based on the, the, the part where it hits. So I think if you're looking for small buffs that would help a lot, that's the first place I would start. Forget, sure, allow people to flash out, just arcane shift out, but make it so you can't flash his ult damage. Because it feels pretty, feels pretty really bad to play, actually. Okay, so it looks like they removed the W, additional W crit on Jinx, which is... Interesting. Um, I look at this and immediately I don't think of Jinx. When is she going to get a level 5 Flame Chompers? With the 6 second buff of Flame Chompers at level 5. Like just, just humor me. When is she going to get this? I, at best, okay, let's say she trades off from her W. She gets at level 13. Um, Jinx's problem isn't at level 13 she's not a great champion. Her problem is, she, unlike the other ADs in the game, she needs multiple items to be good. And so when you think of all the like the super the hyperscaling ADs, essentially they've kind of been pushed out of the meta. You're instead replaced with champions that do really really well at like one or two or item points, rather than a champion like Jinx, who notoriously has done well based on like three two plus three plus item points. And so you don't pick Jinx because you're worried that late game your chompers aren't going to be doing enough. Like if anything, if you get to late game, if you get to the point where flame chompers cooldown actually matters, you're you're in a great position. Because just getting to like the 40, the 30, 40 minute mark means that you're good to go. That's what Jinx does great. Uh, the, what Jinx needs is like the ability to lane better slightly. Uh, and maybe the trade off is, is you take away some of her minigun scaling. I don't know if they want to do that, but if that's what they want, that like if that's something, that's something that they should look into if they want to make her more viable in the current meta. Until the meta shifts to where maybe the games are slower, maybe first tower doesn't matter as much. Uh, Jinx is not going to be a good champ, just straight period, unless her laning phase becomes better. So, another underwhelming buff. It's it's okay. Maybe they switch from maxing W to E, but I don't really think so. Uh, but but maybe 6 seconds off is a decent buff. I'd have to... wait. Cast it in. Oh, I was pretty warned about this, so... I think Kassadin's in a good spot right now. Let me just preface this before I look at anything that they do. 
Cassidy is is and has always been, when he's a healthy champion, a situational counterpick mid-champion to certain mid lane mages that are immobile um, and don't have exceptionally great laning phases to take advantage of him. Um, additionally, he's good against the team comps, which uh, you you as an AP assassin need to be able to consistently cut to the back line. And some team comps, some champions can't do that. Um, the ba When Cassidy's a bad champion is when he's first picked a la season three when, when XPK was like legit first picking this champion every game. Uh, and, and this champ was banned every single competitive game because he's going to get into everything. And he's even better in situations where you need the mobility. And I am very worried about them buffing Kasten because I don't think he needs the buffs. I think he's situationally good right now. He's uh, strong into, he's like okay into Azir and Victor. Like he's good into those two. He's good into Fizz mid. Um, and I think he can kind of split lane against some other stuff. And sure, he loses lane. Strictly loses lane to stuff like Orianna, Cassio. Um, and he's like okay into Talia. But, and loses to Vlad. But I think it's okay that he loses to those lanes because he should. He's a champion that's not supposed to be your, your patented blind pick does well into everything champion. And any kind of buffs that he gets might push him to the area where he loses the fact that he's a counter pick champion and becomes oppressive. Anyways, let's keep going. So, what do you do? W power no longer cancelled if it leaves range during its windup. Um, okay, very small buff. Oh, one second off his Force Pulse. And his Rift Walk has an extra AP ratio. This is actually really interesting. One second off Force Pulse is pretty important. It means the way you skirmish, um, especially because a lot of castings, what they do is, unless the matchup is really hard, they usually keep Q to 3 levels and then max E. Or if it's a, a physical damage matchup, they just max E anyways. Um, and E is like your skirmishing tool, your team fighting tool, and... In team fights, you get E up instantly. Like it's gated not only by your cooldown, but the ability to cast. I think five or six casts to really get it charged up. And in team fights, that's instant. Every single time it'll be up. And on a champion that tends to already stack up to forty percent CDR, this force pulse buff is really nice. Like super good. Um, I think it not only is it helpful in laning phase, it's gonna be like really, really powerful in terms of team fights and skirmishes. Rift walk extra AP ratio is. It's not that big of a deal, honestly. He tends to not be a champion that stacks a ton of AP, because um, he, he's a champion that tends to rush like um, Roa into Lich Bane, for instance, or Roa Zanya's Lich Bane. Um, but still, any small buffs help. But again, I'm worried for casting the buffs because this is a champion where like you touch a little bit too much, and it's like Vladimir. You make him too good, and he becomes picked every game. And don't even get me started. The current Vladimir has is to the point, almost to the point where I'm just like, this champ is pretty impressive. Um, and they only really buffed his passive and his Q slightly. And if they did that for Kassin, he would also be to the point where he might be too good. So, let's talk about Cat. Okay, so I remember before they told me Cat was getting, maybe getting a huge ulti cooldown there, to which I said, why? Um, because I didn't think she needed that. But what is it? What did she get? She got a nerf to her Shumpo. Okay. So it made it by a lot, actually. Wow, 14 seconds. Um, luckily, you still max this ability second, so by level 13, it'll be the exact same. But four seconds off level one is really big because you'll max up until level, what, seven? You'll have four seconds extra under E. It means you really need to pick your all-ins very carefully. And once you disengage from the all-in, you can't go back immediately. Um, I don't mind this this nerf. If they're going to nerf something, I guess this is an okay way to do it. I, I'm still of the idea that playing against Cat is just about being... Understanding the matchup. Like, understanding where the dagger falls. How much time you have to be able to get that way for the matchup. Being able to space it correctly. Uh, I think rather than it being on... The personal strength of the champion. I think it's based on the, the personal skill or skill deficit of the player. Um, but... I guess that's more personal opinion. So if, if they're going to nerf cap, this is an okay way to do it. I don't mind. Let's keep going. Lux. So Lux is... A lot of people ask me why Lux, champions like Lux, champions like Xerath don't see play. Um, Lux is kind of a unique champion because she's very mana hungry. Like she almost demands blue buffs very early. And she's a champion that tends to not be able to lane super well. 
uh, because of how man hungry she is. Like she can shove, but she she doesn't have like super great lane pressure because um, a lot of her scaling revolves around her getting levels and items. Um, levels because her cooldown scaling is very very important, both to your Q and to her E, um, as well as the fact that her wave clear is depending on that too. And so. Um, She's not as bad as, let's say, Xerath, a champion that requires two plus items to be effective. Uh, and why that's not good is similar to the reason why Jinx isn't good. is because you're not going to get the two item spikes before you need the team fight. Like, you're going to need to skirmish here and there, and he's not exceptionally good at that. Uh, on top of the fact that both Lux and Xerath are skillshot dependent champions. I think Lux is okay at one to two items, and so she doesn't tip fall under the same problem. But she's super mana hungry, and so it's easier to push you out of lane, especially if you start, like spam pushing the wave and she has to spam push back typically she'll be the one to go oom um morellos is a lifesaver for her but i'm just curious what they decide to do um i think a lot of her lack of impact early is because like she can't get like the cdr or the levels to be able to boost down uh up her or down her uh cooldowns for her abilities quick enough uh, which is why that she's a champion that I, I feel like scales a lot better with levels than other champions. And it's not scales, it's more like she needs the levels. So what is what does she get buffed? Kills a champion, it refunds 10, 30, 50% of its cooldown. It's like a mid-game to late-game buff. It's not that it's not that great. It's cool, especially late game, it's great. But this won't make this champion be picked that much. Especially, if it, it'd be a different story if, let's say, it was fifty percent of his remaining cooldown on all three levels. Uh, meaning that, like, let's say you set up a good gank or a good pick off with Lux early, um, then she gets her cooldown back faster, and she's she has that like, relevancy with her ulti earlier. But she still has the same problem where she still needs levels to make her CDR scaling better. And so, I, if you've ever played Lux in the past, I don't really think her f problem is her late game. Like, I don't think when she hits three or four items, like, Lux is a bad champ. In fact, Lux is a great champ at four items. Really hard to dive, control spaces really well, and her ulti cooldown is really short. And so, I think that it's not that big of a buff. It, it'd be a different story, yeah, if the CDR was earlier, but I'm not... It's it's not going to make Lux that much better. Uh, outside of the, 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 like, farther, like, past level 11 to, like, 16 range. And I think that the reason why Lux isn't played isn't to the point where... Isn't the reason... After level 11, it's the reasons before level 11. Mm. Okay, so Nunu. New new. Passive causes Nunu next ability to cast at one rank higher than Nunu has leveled it. What? There's not much room to make interesting decisions around a free spellcast where you just use it on the most expensive spell. Bam, decision made. That's true. We're updating Midgetary to offer, offer Nino a real choice. What ability does he need to super cast for the fight at hand? Um. That's actually pretty funny. No, 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 that's not that's that's an interesting one. Wait, they nerfed his base stats. Wait, is Nini oppressive right now? Why did they nerf his base stats? I'm so confused. Were they, were they scared? They were just like, oh shit, Nini is gonna be so OP when you give him this new passive that we gotta preemptively nerf him. I I, I guess I can see the reasoning, it's just Oh, okay. Um, it's not going to do that much. Like, what, what else do I say? I think it's cool. I think this is... It does... You do have more choices. But let's say you run out of the bush and you're ganking, okay? And you just... You really just got to gank uh, this this champion. So you run up and you have Visionary on. Oh, actually, if your Visionary is on or your Visionary is off, you're, which is nearly as passive... You would still cast E on the guy you're ganking. Like, it wouldn't... Because you need to get it on immediately, and you wouldn't really change your decision. And I don't think 1% move speed or 5% attack speed matter. Really, 
Uh, but with Visionary Excels, is like, okay, if they're face checking you and you can't get a nasty absolute zero, plus 250 damage is great, especially early levels. That does insane damage, right? Super good. As well as if you're, if you're saving a consume for securing objectives, that's where Visionary becomes important. But for the rest of the game, it's like not that important. And a nerf a lot of his base stats to compensate, or like a decent amount of his base stats to compensate. I, he's still going to be exactly how he is now. I don't think anything will change. People will play him because it's, it's cool to play him. Heck, I'll probably play him because I think it's funny to play him. But uh, I don't think it really changes much about him. Maybe he's slightly better at security objectives and slightly better at being able to uh, do that really gimmicky rise ulti into absolute zero play that you see on Reddit. Like maybe you could get a bigger damage one. But that's that's about it. Slightly faster clears as well. Actually, it might increase his clear speed by by a lot if you max Q. Maybe maybe that's the maybe that's the big difference. I guess we'll see. I think that it's plus one hundred sixty damage. Maybe maxing Q. Q means that you'll just be a god at securing the juggle. I guess, I don't play enough Nunu to know. I'll wait to see what happens. All right, let's keep going. Rengar, so this is like another really, really strong champ. Um, if <laughs> This champ does so much damage. Uh, they nerfed his base armor last patch, I think, uh, which made it so that he actually got low in the jungle. Really good, because it means that you, that you can invade him in the end. It's really hard for him to do like level three ganks unless he gets a lot of help in the jungle. Um, so what did they decide to do here? I still think Rengar is probably too good uh, because he had like a really OP CC break on W that also made him immune until they just nerfed it recently as well. Um, so what did they do? They made it so his Q damage got nerfed. Uh, 20 at level 1, 25 at level 1, and reduced by 0.1. I, honestly, any slight damage buff or, or nerfs are fine with me. I think Rengar is very close to being good. Like just, just like really good as opposed to like stupidly good but um, at the moment Rengar is still probably too strong it doesn't matter that Rengar is nerfed every patch this season like if a champion is stupidly good who cares if he gets nerfed Camille, okay, Camille has been nerfed a lot this season and even though she has been nerfed a lot she still gets first picked in LCS all the time um, and, and if you play against her in solo queue I'm sure you're not like wow uh, they nerfed her but she just killed my AD carry, so what did they do? Like, it doesn't, like, I don't care if a champion gets 25 nerfs. That just means that she was that over tuned before the nerf train started that they had to nerf her 25 times to get her in a good spot. Uh, but I think, I don't know if Rengar needs that many more nerfs. Like, I think he's in almost a good spot um, right now. I think... Yeah, this is this is good. Hopefully, not much more is needed. Rumble. This champ does a lot of damage. Actually, a ton of damage. If you played against Rumble recently, um, he beats all the melee matchups because he just spam shoves in early. I think with the exception of maybe Renekton, and I heard Fizz does pretty well to Rumble. Rumble literally just sits there with his stupid flame spinner in front of your tower, and you can't do anything about it. Like the counterplay to it is. You call your jungler to camp the lane because he's pushed up into harass you under tower. He needs to flame spitter it. Um, I thought they would maybe change something differently, but I think having a different recharge time on his electric harpoon is still good. Like I would have been okay with any kind of nerf to his damage, whether slightly slight slight nerf to his damage anywhere. Um, e is I guess a good place to start. He might need more nerfs with this though because I still think he's probably too good. Uh, keep going. Shaco. Okay, so right now, Shaco is one of the best solo key junglers in the game. And I don't ever think Shaco should be one of the best solo key cha uh, junglers in the game. Uh, the, the reason is, is because one, he's a champion that really rewards champion mastery. Like, you have to play as champion a lot uh, to understand, like, unique gank routes, uh, unique pathing, like, really unique counter jungling. He has a lot of wide variety of champions. So, like, only really the people who really invest time in the Shaco should be able to play him at like a really good level. Um, at the moment, you're just seeing Shaco every other game, and the champion itself is just good. Um, <laughs> like, too good. 
I don't know if it's just his actual damage, his boxes, his clear speed. I'm not sure what they're going to touch about this, but I do think he needs a slight nerf. That's so what they do. They nerf his new AP ratio. His, he, he has an AD ratio, but his backside now has an AP Actually... Wait, is this even a nerf? They just gave him a free po ratio that scales slightly worse at, at level 11. Okay. Oh, it's, what about his Q? The, oh, wow. They nerfed 80 base damage off his Q. That's a lot. No longer has a 0. 0.4 ratio. Uh, so they moved the ratio from his Q to his backstab, which is, in my opinion, better for AP users in the first place, I think? Maybe. Um, cooldown got buffed. Well, that's actually, that's so bad. Because you have to max Q first because the, uh, as opposed to the old Shaco, you had to, you need Q levels to get more time uh, to be in Viz. And that's the biggest difference. And so they nerfed 80 damage off of his ganking ability, essentially. As well as they nerfed the cooldown uh, like slightly early. I, that, that matter is like a little bit less. I don't mind them switching the AP ratio to backstab. It rewards people to be able to position well uh, behind the other player. Um, and I think it also works on your uh, clone. I think he can also backstab, so it's not bad. But uh, removing 80 base damage off your gank. Uh, the champ is still going to be good. Uh, the nerf might be a little bit too much, but uh, I guess I'll see. I don't play enough Shaco to be able to definitively say if this is like an enormous thing that changes a lot about the champ. I, I suspect that it is. Um, but maybe Shaco's just fine farming, and then Kanky later, honestly, it might not be that bad. Uh, Syndra, bug fixes. I, I, I see bug fixes and I see the ulti, and I think to myself, they're gonna make it so you can't get one shot by ulti alone. But, at least power is no longer reset, the first cast is interrupted. Uh... If Scissor's target dies, big cast remaining enemies will can nearby Dark Seas will continue to pummel their corpse. Alright, that's cool. You're able to ulti someone and still set up the uh, wide E. Uh, and if Scissor's target becomes untarable during unleashed power, Dark Spheres where in flight will now drop in place rather than disappearing entirely. Oh, that's really nice. So it means that even if you ulti someone that's going to go invulnerable, you still get a lot of balls to work with uh, to be able to use as uh, stun targets. So if anything, this is just a buff to the champion. Outside of the one situation where you ulti and it doesn't do anything. Why they buff Syndra? That's actually what the bug fixes say. That's interesting. It's crazy. Talon. Um, I think the champ is really good right now. Um, I think one of the big... I don't think he's that good, but but he's actually pretty fairly lane dominant. And if you're lane dominant, you're able to work essentially in any situation. Or in a lot of situations. It means he's close... To, He's as close to a blind pickable melee physical damage assassin as we've had in a long time. Uh, him and Talon, but I think Talon is just better against most of the field. And so, I th one of the frustrating things about playing against Talon is dying to the level 2 all in. And I think that them nerfing the Noxian Diplomacy early damage means that that's not really possible. Unless they m misposition even more. The more you play against Talon, I think the less people die against him. By the moment his damage, especially level 2, is kind of a little bit nuts. Guy for a nerf, surprised they're not bigger nerfs, honestly. I wouldn't have been surprised to just see him take a flat 20 off of Q the entire way. Okay. Volibear. This champ sucks right now. Um, I think... the pro I used to play Volibear a lot, actually. Um, like, a ridiculous amount. To the point where... I remember people, people couldn't believe that I played this champion that much. I think I played him over 100 games in... In, oh, I played the 50, 65 games in the last season. So I and this used to be my go-to juggler to win games. Essentially, like this was my crutch. Um, 
ever since Volet, there was one patch I remember way long ago that um, the meta junglers, the junglers that were smashing everyone in solo queue and competitive were, I think, Nidalee, or it was at least Rek'Sai and Nidalee. I think those three champs. And th the patch comes out and Riot it said something like, due to Vola Bear's strength in the jungle, uh, we had to nerf his early W damage. And I read that and I was just like, you, you're messing with me. There's no way this champion is more oppressive than other champions. Like, like, this was back when, like, those champions were, like, taking over every game. And I just got so... I was Ever since then, Volibear has lost his niche. Because he needed the damage early to snowball. This is a champion... Volibear is a champion that snowballs really, really hard and sucks late game. Like, absolutely. His initiation is he cues and runs at you. Wow, like, you can just run away with Karma Shield or, like, get Poly or CC as they run at you, and you're, you're useless. And so, he's only good if you get Snowball early, get above the item curve, and then just, like, tank stuff. And initiate before it gets, like, level 13. But, ever since the WNF, he's never, he hasn't been able to skirmish people as effectively, and that really hurt his, like, ability to actually take over games. Um, and so he is the one niche that he had, which is early to, early snowballing mid game dominant juggler, got nerfed, and there was really no reason to pick him. And now I don't really I, I don't like him either. So what do they do? They made it so his ulti can bounce to twice as many targets. It makes his team fighting a little bit better. I'll, I'll go with that. Um, but this is not his problem. Like. <laughs> I actually think they need, to re they need to rework this champ because when you think of when you think of lightning bear, like let's just say you're thinking uh, a bear, a storm, armored bear that calls the power of lightning and thunder and all this stuff. You you don't think to yourself like he's gonna be so strong, he's gonna call lightning from the sky and empower his auto attacks to like do more damage and like splash a little bit. Like, I, I just think that his ulti is really underwhelming. Like, this is a champion that should be super cool. I'm, you're playing an armored bear, and thematically, I don't, it doesn't get me. Or I don't get it, I guess. And so I, I'm hoping that in the future, they just rework this champ, because <laughs> he's not good right now. He doesn't really have his niche because he got nerfed, and his Thunderclaw, like, this buff isn't going to do anything about it. Like, he's going to be slightly better at being able to team fight, especially against large amounts of people, but he's still gonna have the same problems made the late game that he does right now, which is that he can't do anything. He just gets initiated on, or not initiated. He can't initiate, so he's useless. So, anyways, more of this. Sun Goddess Karma. Looks beast. Raptors, more health, less damage. Raptors have been the most predatory camp on the rift since the preseason update. While some champions can quickly pop the little birds without suffering massive amounts of damage, everyone else is guaranteed to walk away cover with dance. That's true. Uh, like I said, the jungle just beats you up. So what do they do? They nerf the base damage, attack damage from 16 to 13. Um, and then they increase its health to 4 by 50. I hope this means that no that Raptor Camp just becomes like an option to start rather than every game. Because at the moment, I don't think you should start. Like starting Raptor seems pretty lame, honestly. It should only be a starting path for champions that have a lot of AoE. But you see situations where it's like, I'm Lee Sin. I'm, I'm <laughs> mid laner, throw your, your wave clear at this. And top laner, throw your wave clear at, at Raptor Camp. I'm going to kill this with Lee Sin not starting E. I think that's pretty stupid. Like I really don't think that should be the thing. So, um... I'm happy for them to be able to change raptors to make them harder to kill. I, I don't I don't really like the current jungle meta where it's like you start raptors every game regardless of champion unless you can't leash. I think it should only be like kind of like an AoE thing. Um Alright, aside from that, I think it's good. Lifesteal interactions. Attacking units with warlike health no longer grants lifesteal. Okay. Magic damage shield is now bluish purple instead of kind of light pink. <laughs> All right, uh, I don't play other game modes. I new feature highlights.
Oh, you'll be able to see your mastery grade and IP earned on the map. Wait, what about your LP? Wait, that's the only thing that matters for me. Oh, wait, I, I sorry. Riot, will, Riot, similar to Blizzard, will never, ever, ever show IP gain ever, or LP gain ever again. Um, that's because um, psychologically, it makes a lot of people not want to play the game. And so, similar to why it doesn't show your overall losses if you view other people's accounts so they can judge you or you can judge yourself, you will no longer gain that information for free without going to other websites. Um, that's just how it is uh, at the moment with all, across almost all the major games. Um, I don't like it, but that's just it. Um, Highlights let players relive their most memorable moments and replays. In the past, we've been difficult to watch and share. Uh, we've incorporated your feedback to make the parts of the replays experience. Now you'll see highlights actually under your profile uh, where you can watch, rename, and delete saved clips. You now watch highlights under your profile tab. You now see highlights tab are stored on your computer. You can now change. You can. Oh, wait, wait. All I need to know, all I want to know about this highlights thing is if I visit someone else's highlights, can I see them doing nasty stuff? Like. If if I if I look at like who's who's like a really high feet player, if I go to LL Stylish's profile, can I see him getting like a pentakill one v five in against the other team, or is it only for myself to see my own highlights? Because if it's only for myself to see my own highlights, that's so irrelevant. Like I don't care. But if I can see other people's highlights, that'd be really cool. I, I think that'd be not bad. And I think it's only for me. And so if it's only for me, I I don't care about this update at all. And they, they said they'll implement it in the future. Uh, we'll wait for that out. And I don't like to read bug, fix, bug fixes because usually it's one bug fix that's fine and then 26 bug fixes that aren't that great. Oh, God, God Fist Lisa will be released as patch too. All right, cool. Um, okay, well, I'm done for the new patch. Overall, I would say this patch is pretty good. I liked everything about it. Uh, some of the buffs I didn't like, or some of the nerfs I didn't think were that good. Um, so, for instance, I don't think the Volibear buff does anything. I don't really think the Rumble nerf does super much. I don't think the Nunu change does super much. But, but the, actually, this is okay. I don't think the Lux thing does a, a lot. And I don't know if I really like the casting, or I don't, I don't think it, the Jinx thing does too much. Uh, they're all steps in the right direction, however, it's that maybe they didn't go too far with it. Uh, I perf I'm okay with doing them doing small buffs. I would prefer balance, rather than them looking to balance casting it, which I think is a playable champion, not bad. I would have been much rather more hyped for them to like slowly buff up Xerath or something, a champion that doesn't see much play, as opposed to buffing a champion that is already situationally good. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's, let's go look at the new champs. So this is the first time they've ever released a two champions at the same time with I, I well from what I heard they like match each other they complement each other. Now like I said initially on my stream this would have been a great reveal at Valentine's because they would have sold so many skins. <laughs> not only skins but champions. It's like if you're in a relationship and you're just like is this relationship serious? And the the only answer to that question is yeah, buy these skit the, these champions together, right? But let's just go look around at the champions, see what they do. I start let's start with Zai Zaya Zaya. I don't know how to pronounce this name. They should really add that because I have no idea. They they say I don't know when to quit. Like that's a weakness. Okay, sure. Um, I'm not gonna read lore. I'm sorry. I'm really only interested in just their champion abilities. Um, so what does she do? After casting the ability, her first few basic attacks will pierce through all enemies in the path, dealing reduced damage to all targets after the first one. Uh, they'll also leave a feather where they land. Feathers remain on the field for a moderate length of time. Okay. So they, it's an on-hit passive that goes through stuff. Cool, okay. Cool. 
Throws two blades in a line, damaging all enemies hit. The blades leave a feather where they land. Okay? So you Q and you throw some autos to leave a lot of feathers. Cool. Deadly Plumage. Conjures a storm of feather blades that increase the speed in s of her next basic autos. If Zaya, Zaya attacks an enemy champion while empowered by Deadly Plumage, she'll gain a short boost bo burst of movement speed. If wait, this works with with someone else. If someone else is nearby, he'll also gain the ability's effects. Really? Uh, interesting. Okay. So immediately you look at this passive and, and you have like five feathers to go through or a decent amount of feathers to go through after your, your abilities, right? You get three feathers to go through after your Q. Um, with that in mind, getting through these feathers is really hard, especially for base attack speed. And so seeing that it increases your attack speed of her, of her next few autos as well as increased movement speed to make you stick on people, makes that's like the synergy to make it so that you can throw out a lot of feathers. What these feathers do, I have no idea. I'm assuming it's this ability. It recalls all their feathers to deal damage to any any enemies on the, the way back and it struck okay and oh it's slightly rooted what's the duration that's one second that's not that bad it's about uh, 0.5 seconds to one second not bad at all Wait. So <laughs> that's actually really strong. I, that's really surprising that they they have uh, just specifically for one other champion. Featherstorm leaps in the air, becoming briefly untar. Wait, she get the mean abilities? All right. After a short short delay, she hurls a storm of feathers in a cone, each of which deals damage to struck enemies and leaves a feather upon landing. May continue to move while- oh, she can move while airborne? Oh my god, another invulnerability? It even shows you dodging Ash Arrow, and you can move while airborne, that's crazy. Okay, so immediately my first thoughts are, right, I like the fact that her kit is entirely synergistic. Everything is built off getting feathers, using abilities, getting feathers, throwing feathers, returning feathers. It, it's it's very avian. Uh, I like the fact that it's all like synergistic. It's I think those are the best champions where everything that a champion does works well off her theme. Um, I like it. I don't know what the damage is going to be. I don't even know if it's going to be that OP. I just think it's cool. What's the recall? Special recall. If Zayara Rakan Rakin is recalling, their lover can seek up with them, choreographing a perfect return to the base. <laughs> Wait, they take the other one to the base with them. That's actually. It's interesting. Very very special, unique pat, unique. Uh, this is gonna sell so much. It's a paired champion, thematic with birds and with the like the trait of them being lovers. This is gonna make so much money for Riot Games. So, sorry, that's just an aside. Anyone chasing is asking you to stuff by blade color. Uh, Straits qu quickly clean cut through whole waves, shredding their ranks with a single auto. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go see. Let me go see their in game clips. I think that's a lot better. So she's flanking. Okay. Wow! The movement looks so nice! She's invulnerable when she moves in there. It looks so nice.
Wait, okay, okay, forget this. The entire clip, Victor kills Caitlyn. She snares Janna and she's not able to catch up to kill Janna. That's what the entire clip gives you. This is like their gameplay clip. I'm just, I'm just saying, she did not do much here. Oh, that's no sound. Yeah, she ulti to immune the, the Zed ulti. God, why is her ulti at- I, Immunity on an ulti is such a powerful effect. That's so much damage too, what the heck? The reverse damage? Now this, this makes her look good. Because it's like, how are you going to be able to play against this champion if you're Zed? You just gotta do it normally and just like, beat her down before she uses her ulti. Alright, it's interesting. Alright, let's look at the other champion. So, general impression of her, uh, I like the synergy. I would say they're overplaying the like, the lovers like duo thing too much, but it seems like it's a very small amount of of her actual effects in game. So it's really just her W, right? And the, and the recall. And on top of that, I think that um, they really haven't had this type of theme before. And so I'm giving them the, the leeway because I can see where it becomes like kind of obnoxious if it's overdone. I don't think they did it too much. Okay, so Rakan. Magic is supposed to be scary. Love is supposed to hurt. XC needs a little. Okay, I, why do I read these? Um, so this is a champion. I have no idea what he does. One of those feathers. What is this? Oh, it's also a avian type champion. Co occasionally generates a shield even in combat. Can reduce his ability by attacking an enemy champ. So he just gets a shield. So cleans an enchanted feather. If it connects with an enemy champ or epic monster, it deals. Da Is this a t jungler? It deals damage and Rakan's cloak surges with magic. After a brief moment, a heal triggers an area around. It activates immediately. Oh, okay. So if he harasses no, if he harasses someone in the bot lane with this this really really weird skill shot, um, then it bounces back to him and it heals your opponent. Okay, so it encourages damage base a healing based on skill shot hitting. Not super obnoxious, it's not point click, seems good. Rakan leaps forward, landing stylishly at the de destination. He didn't pause it for dramatic effect before launching into the air and knocking up nearby opponents. Cool. Initiation Velkazol. That's lit or Velkazi, that's what it is. Um hasn't been put in the game before now that I think about it. Not bad. Uh, gap closing, uh, CC, essentially. Khan leaps to an ally, shielding him from harm. It gives us- wait, 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 what the heck? I need to see this again. It, it, does it give a shield? Yes. Small shield. Okay. God, why does it say that? The rate, wait. The... the rage is so much longer for, for the other one. Like, okay. Okay, so the shield elongates if, if he's with his partner. But it's not that big of a deal if he's not. Like honestly, the long range is is pretty crazy and the short range is okay. Alright, let's keep going. Quickness. Breaks into a sprint, enchanting his cloak and captivating his audience. While the the quickness is active, charms and damages all enemies he touches, works once per champion. First champion he touches grants him a huge burst of movement speed. What? <laughs> I like it. It's actually really, really unique. He's he turns into Sonic that charms you if he touch if he touches you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I hit him with the quickness. The nasty right here. Alright. I know. It looks cool. He's a support, right? I would play this champ for sure. God. Riot killed it with the theme as well. This is gonna sell so much. Alright, I like both the both the characters are bird characters but are unique and the kit's like syner the kit synergizes very well. Uh, and so I don't really have complaints about the kit. They both look interesting. They're not re we 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 wash stuff. Or, or the stuff that is isn't like the important part of the kits, and so I got, I got nothing to say. It looks cool. Riot's too good. That's all I gotta say, man. In-game clips. Where's the? Oh, it's right here. Doing the first six seconds of the clip, he literally gets gets a scuttle f or the, the fruit, honey fruit. He, he 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 gap closes and then he W's and then no 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 note this. Once he goes in, he can go straight back. So it's just a harass ability that can CC. And if he doesn't like what he's seeing, if he's like I gotta get out of here, it's like a small window for you to also W back to the same target. That's actually so nice. Like, it doesn't show it, but he can do it. You know, just thinking about it means the harass is super good. Because it means he can get in and out on harass as a melee champ. Oh, and he, and he W's back. And he flashes into the stupid ulti thing. Oh, the cliffs make, the, the cliffs make you want to play him. I, I'm legit... He looks fun. He looks great. I like this this character more than the other one. Rick Rakan, Rakan, whatever. It's good. Here comes the money, indeed, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll play. I'll play both these first day. Well, I don't play. I don't mind the AD, but this guy, for sure. All right, I, I I'm done with. Both my patch notes run down and my the champion reveals. I'm going back into queue. So I'll see you guys in a little bit.